We're going to set up Duo, which is a two-factor authentication product, and connect that to our Windows Server VPN. So we first we need to install VPN. If you've done this part of it, you can skip ahead a little bit. What we want to do is go to Add Roles and Features, and the type of VPN we're going to set up uh, is going to be point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, but also I'll show you how to do the uh, uh, SSTP, which is the SSL VPN as well. So let's go ahead and click on Remote Access. And we'll click Next. And we'll go ahead and finish that up. All right, now let's go ahead and click on Direct Access and VPN RAS. Click to add the features. And install. It's also going to install a bare bones IIS or web server onto the uh, server as well, which is going to be required to make routing and remote access work. Once it's done, go ahead and click close. And now we should see if we go to tools and routing and remote access, our VPN box. By default, it's going to be turned off. So we'll just have to go through a quick wizard, right click and choose configure and enable routing and remote access. And this next part is very important that you don't choose the wrong thing. So you want to make sure you choose custom configuration, not anything else. Otherwise, you could lose access to your server by your clients. And then we'll click Next, and we'll click VPN Access, Next, and Finish. When prompted, go ahead and start the service. And now we see it started. We'll go ahead and expand. And now we'll right-click on the service, and we'll choose Properties. Then we'll go over to where it says IPv4. So by default, point-to-point -point tunneling protocol is enabled as of this point. You have a couple of extra options, though. If you have a DHCP server you want to use, you can go ahead and leave this default box checked. If you want to give it a static pool that's outside the DHCP pool, then you can go ahead and click Add and add that at this time. We're just going to go ahead and use the DHCP server. Now let's click on Security. Now if you have a certificate for from the outside, such as from Network Solutions or GoDaddy, whatever, then that certificate should show up right here. So if you want to use uh, SSTP, which is also known as SSL VPN, then you would see that certificate at this point, and you'll choose it, and then you'll go ahead and click OK, and then SSTP and point-to-point -point tunneling protocol will both be enabled. Now, if you want to use uh, L2TP or Ike V2, that will require some additional setting up, and I do have another video on that, which you can check out in the playlist. But for now, we're just going to go ahead with what we have here, and we can say VPN is now enabled. So the next thing we're going to want to do is make sure we go into Control Panel. And by the way, this server is a Windows uh, Server 2016. So you can also get this to work on 2019 or 2012. doesn't matter. This works the same way on all of those. It works differently on Windows Server 2008, although it will work. It's just it looks different. Now we'll go into the firewall. We want to make sure that we have some ports open. So we're going to go click on Advanced Settings. And then we're going to create a new firewall rule. You could also enable some of the default firewall rules as well, but this way is a little bit more expedient. So the advanced rules have come up. We'll click on Inbound Rules. And then we're going to right-click and choose to create a new rule. Let's go ahead and choose a port. Click Next. We're going to put in 80, comma. Then we're going to put in 443, and then we'll just go ahead and click Next. Allow the connection, all different types, and we'll just say Duo Ports and Finish. And we see that at the top it's lit up green, which means it's enabled. All right, we can close the firewall, and we can close the control panel, and now we're back in our routing remote access setup. Next thing we want to do is we want to go and download the Duo Auth proxy and whatever version they're currently on, and you'll get the latest one by going to a specific link. And you can see it here at the top of the screen, so if you want, you can pause the video and go ahead, write that down, and go to that website. It'll automatically help have you download the latest uh, Duo Auth proxy program. I will right, we'll go ahead and minimize that. And in case you're wondering what the Duo Auth proxy does, when it works with Windows VPN, when anybody goes to uh, connect to the VPN connection to the server, it will first 
go to the username and the password, then it will hand it off to the RADIUS server, which is what we're about to install with the Duo Auth proxy. And at that point, it will communicate with Duo themselves, where there's a license that you have to purchase is all set up, and you set up users on the website where you purchase the licenses. So basically, you set up the same username and password at Duo that you would in Active Directory. And once that happens, you'll get a little ping on your smartphone after the, uh, the application has been installed, which you can get from your Play Store and it'll work on iPhone as well as Android. So you'll get a little ping, it'll say, hey, do you authorize this connection? You say, okay, and then you'll be connected to VPN. Once we're done with the server portion, I'll go ahead and show you how to set up the client portion as well. And now we're all done, we'll go ahead and click close. And now we're gonna go into the file where it is we config our new program. So we'll click on the C drive, Program Files x86, and we'll go to Duo Security Authentication Proxy, and we'll go to the CONF file, and then we see this authproxy.config. So we're going to right-click on that, and we're going to choose Open With, and we're going to choose WordPad, and that's because Notepad sometimes opens it up in a, uh, a very odd way. So we'll go ahead and click WordPad, click OK. So you see a lot of different configuration instructions here. Just go ahead and push that down the screen. We're going to go ahead and use our own configuration, which is going to be much faster. We're going to start by typing in some brackets. We'll do main. And let's go ahead and make the text a little larger here. There we go. And I recommend that you go ahead and put in debug equals true, and that's because if you have any trouble, you want to see what's going on as far as the log files go. All right, so now we're going to go to uh, the next part, which is our AD underscore client. So make sure that you are installing this in a domain uh, that's a Windows Active Directory domain. I'm putting it onto the domain controller itself, although you can put it onto another server as long as you have port 1812. Uh, turned on between the two servers because that's what our radius is going to be using. All right, now we're going to be putting in our host, and in this particular case, our internal IP address of our server is .251, and now we're going to put in service underscore account underscore username equals and then whatever user you want to use to authenticate this. We're going to use the administrator, but I don't recommend that because of this clear text uh, file that anybody could get into if they knew what they were doing. Then we're going to go ahead and put in our password, service underscore account again, underscore password, and then equals, and I'll just go ahead and put in what our password is. Pretty simple password for our test domain. Then we'll put in a search underscore dn equals dc equals, and in our case we're calling it widget, comma, dc equals internal. So it, whatever your domain is, a first uh, name dot extension, that's what you're going to put in here just like that. So the fully qualified domain name of my Active Directory domain is widget dot internal. And that's how I got that. All right, so now we're going to put in the radius portion. So again, we put in our brackets, type a radius, underscore server, underscore auto, and end bracket, and next line. And then we'll put in our I key equals, and then we're going to put in our S key equals. All right, so your I key and your S key are going to be available to you when you log in to your Duo security web page. So you'll be able to get uh, those from your license that you purchased. So uh, either it's going to be mailed to you or it's going to be, you're going to get from the web page. Uh, one way or another, you're going to get access to this I key and S key in a secure manner. And you'll have that information and you'll put that in at this point. I'm just going to put in uh, fake information here because we don't have a purchase license just for this particular video. Now we'll go ahead and put in the next piece, which is appy underscore host equals ap i dash 
And so we have api-57524b97.duosecurity.com. So what that is, that's the website it's going to go out to to get the second factor authentication. So that's a public address. And now we need to do, put in our radius underscore IP equals. And this could either be the internal IP address of your server, but what I recommend and what I've found more success with is putting it in 127.001 if it's on the same server as your domain controller. If it's on a different server, then you would put in that 192.168, whatever IP address uh, that you installed the uh, software on. In our case, it's all in the same place, so we'll go ahead and use that. Next thing we'll do is we'll put in our radius underscore secret, and that's just a secret password between the two devices, and just type it exactly as you see here. Now, here's where you, the secret comes in. You can put in whatever secret you want. So I'm just going to type in secret, which is not a good idea, and we'll go ahead and hit enter. And we've just got a couple more lines left, so we're going to put in client equals ad underscore client. So that just shows that we're using Active Directory. And then the port. So the port equals 1812. Now, if you have another uh, Radius server going on that uses this port, you'll have to change this to something else. So you can add a zero on the end here to make it 18120, or you could make it 1813, whatever it is you want. I'm going to leave it on 1812 as we don't have anything else running in that. And then we'll put in the fail mode equals safe. All right, so if you have all of those set up just the way you see here, then your configuration is done. So just go ahead and double check everything is good, and then we'll uh, save it and close it. Now we're back to our server in the routing remote access area. We're going to go to our routing remote access, the um, NPS, Network Policy Service. So we're going to right-click and choose Launch NPS. And by default, it's going to have a couple of policies that are going to keep this from working correctly. So we're going to want to turn those off. We don't actually need any remote access policies at all. So we'll just go ahead and uh, disable, actually. The, we're not going to delete them in case we need them in the future, but we'll disable these uh, before we move on. So let's go ahead and click on Network Policies, and you can see the two uh, disabled policies. We'll just go ahead, or I should say uh, policies that are set to reject anything. You can see Deny Access by default, and we're just going to right-click on those and choose Disable. And you'll see them gray out at this point, so we'll just choose Disable on both of those. And once that's done, we'll go ahead and close, and we'll go back, and we're almost done with the server portion. We're going to right-click on our server, go to Properties again, and now we're just going to change the Windows authentication. So we're going to first change the Windows authentication at the top to Radius, and at the bottom to none. And now we're going to click on Configure Radius Authentication and click Add. And then we're going to put in the server name. And this is the server itself that we have it installed on. So if you've got uh, the auth proxy installed you know, someplace else, then you'll put the name of it there. So we'll click Change on the secret. And that's going to be our secret password, which was secret. Okay, we'll click OK, and we're going to leave our port at 1812 unless you changed your port in that config file, and then you would make it match here. All right, we'll go ahead and click OK, and click OK, and now we're going to go to authentication methods. We're going to uncheck everything except for PAP. So don't worry about the fact that it says unencrypted password. It'll be fine. We've got this duo authentication, which will keep us safe. Go ahead and hit Apply when done. Now you're going to get this message here saying you selected one or more authentication methods, et cetera, et cetera. You want to view the corresponding help topic. I'll go ahead and choose no, but you can certainly choose yes if you want. And now it's saying you made changes. Would you like to save those? Yes, we would. And one thing you may want to do is just go right back into the same place and make sure that it's still set up the way you just set it up because sometimes you'll see uh, some sort of an error in the security tab. And we just want to make sure that there's nothing wrong there before we continue. So we'll click OK. Now we're going to want to go to our services and make sure the service is running. So we'll go to services.msc. And this can also be done by command prompt as well, where you do a net stop and a net start on Duo Auth Proxy. So we'll just go down to where it says Duo. 
and we can see that it's set to automatic, but it hasn't started up yet. So we'll go ahead and click Start. If it is started already, go ahead and restart it after making those changes. And now we're going to go over to the client sec section. Now remember, we don't have the correct keys in here, the uh, I key and S key. So this isn't going to work unless you have the correct keys. So the service isn't going to start and work properly until you have the correct keys. So your, your service will start. I've done this many times and have not had any issues when you have the correct keys in there. All right, so we'll go ahead and switch over to the client and we'll set up the client VPN portion and show you how to connect. We're on our Windows 10 client, and I'm in the control panel. Now, in the future, there's going to be a way you can do this uh, through the GUI using the settings button. So if it's at that point and you're watching this now, you can go ahead and do it through the settings button. But for now, we still need to do this through our network and sharing center. And again, this is in Windows 10. Windows 7 will work in a similar way. So we'll click on set up a new connection, and we'll click that link. Choose VPN. Click Next. Click Next again, and here's where you want to put in the internet address or the certificate name. So if you have a uh, point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, you can just put the, uh, the IP address or uh, the name of the site you're trying to connect to. If you are using a certificate, you have to use the exact name that's on the certificate that I showed you when we were in the properties uh, of routing remote access. So if the certificate's name is, uh, for instance, duo.widget.com, then it has to be that. And I'll just call this uh, Office VPN Connection. We'll click Create. Now, on Windows 7, it'll automatically try to connect. So at this point, just choose Skip. Now we'll click on Change Adapter Settings. And by the way, Windows 8 and 8.1 work very similar to Windows 10 in this particular case. So now we see the Office VPN. Let's go ahead and make some changes by clicking on Properties and going to Security. And from here, we're going to go ahead and you can choose the type of VPN if you'd like. And the reason you might want to do that is it will connect a lot faster if you know which type of VPN you want, so it won't scroll through all the different options. So if you know what it is, go ahead and choose it. If you don't, leave it as automatic. And then we're going to click on Allow These Protocols. And we're going to check the box that says PAP and uncheck the box that says MS Chat V2. And we'll click OK. If you get this message, you can go ahead and click Yes to it. And now we're done. So now you can go ahead and double click on the connection and it'll open up your VPN connections and then it'll try to connect you to the Office VPN. You'll click connect and then you'll put in your username and password at this point. After you put in the username and password, uh, you'll have a, a, a program installed, an app installed on your smartphone for Duo. Now you can go to your Play Store, Apple Store, type in Duo, download the official Duo app, and when you do, then you can go ahead and get uh, send off a, an invitation to the user, as the administrator, you'll send an invitation after you log into the Duo website. When you send the invitation, uh, then they'll be able at that point to uh, link up to your Duo account. At that point, you'll log, try to log in, and then you'll get a buzzing sound on your phone saying, hey, do you want to connect to this Duo application? And at that point, you'll say yes, and you'll accept it. And then you'll be connected to VPN, and then you can uh, connect and use VPN just like you did in the past, but this time using the Duo protocols. And that's how you set up Duo for Windows VPN on a Windows server. And again, this will work on 2019, 2016, 2012 as well.